resilient. Powerful. We welcome everybody, but it has a specific significance for people of color. Changing lives. The black community is filled with everyday heroes from the past. Just as I have a dream. To the present. It did feel like a big leap and it felt like it was almost impossible. They are leaders, storytellers, entrepreneurs, and visionaries, shining bright during Black History Month and beyond. NBC 10 is celebrating black excellence. NBC 10 presents Celebrating Black Excellence, brought to you by Lankanaw Heart Institute, a leader in advanced cardiovascular care. Thanks for joining us. I'm Erin Coleman. And I'm Jacqueline London. In the next half hour, we will introduce you to African Americans in our area who are inspiring others through community, engagement, education, and entrepreneurship. We begin with a woman blazing a trail in hospitality. She is the owner of not one, not two, but five bed and breakfasts up and down the East Coast. The newest property opened just a few months ago in West Philly. Entrepreneur Spirit, brought to you by Keystone First. Keystone First, putting you first. Every morning, something is sizzling in this kitchen. This is a quaba. I love this inn. I'm smitten with the city, so I'm really on fire about Philadelphia. Monique Greenwood is the founder of Aquaba Bed and Breakfast Inns. If her name sounds familiar, it is. She's the former editor-in-chief of Essence Magazine, launching her first B&B 24 years ago while still running the publication. Eventually I decided, you know what, if I fully give myself to this business, I think I could really be successful. So I made that difficult decision to leave the magazine and then expand the bed and breakfast business. That now includes Brooklyn, D.C., Cape May, the Poconos, and what she calls her baby, Philadelphia. It's a place where LPs line the walls from the spinners and the stylistics to boys to men. Our theme is the sound of Philadelphia, so I'm so excited about that because we wanted to really celebrate the rich legacy that Philadelphia has when it comes to music. So much so, you might just be staying in the swoon suite, paying homage to Teddy P., or the itchy gitchy yaya room, all pretty and pink for Patty. And the creme de la creme, the roots retreat that sleeps seven on the top floor. Oh, this is huge. I love how you kept a lot of the homes original. Yes, absolutely. Pieces. So anything that was original, we didn't change. History is important to Greenwood, especially the history of the bed and breakfast tradition. We are the founders of this whole concept, you know. I claim that because back during segregation, when we couldn't stay in any hotel, you know, we would stay in one another's homes. And that basically was the foundation for what a bed and breakfast is. When it comes to the modern day bed and breakfast, I believe I'm setting an example of how we can now take this industry and be relevant to it. Her guests can't help but sing her praises. We've been to all of her properties and obviously we're a big fan. To me, she's like five star number one. It's, it's, it's just that type of place. Happy birthday, happy birthday. A place that feels familiar, that feels like home and keeps people coming back for more. My guests have nicknamed it Wakanda. Um, so we welcome everybody, but it has a specific significance for people of color. They see themselves reflected in what's around the walls and the breakfast, you know, we, we know to get the hot sauce ready. I mean, whatever it is, you know, we're connected in a special kind of way. I tell you, it was hard not to sing along there. Monique Greenwood told me she really wants to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs. So she holds workshops periodically to teach people how to break into the B&B business. 
And one local woman is pouring her heart and soul into that next generation, giving kids a head start in learning. A popular event in Philadelphia gives kids access to a world of opportunities. The annual African American Children's Book Festival attracts nearly 4,000 people. Pam Osborne introduces us to the visionary leader behind one of the oldest and largest book fairs dedicated to black children and teaching the joy of reading. Visions and Values, brought to you by WSFS Bank. We stand for service. Newspapers, novels, speeches, and politics. I can't see. Are you teachers? For 27 years, Vanessa Lloyd Scambani has used her work as a literary consultant to fuel her passion. Years ago, we used to have these stop, drop, go under your desk drills. And I couldn't figure out why are we doing this? And my teacher said, the Russians are coming, so we need to be prepared. I wanna know more about these Russians and why are they coming for me? Her teacher suggested she go to the library to find out more. Well, I didn't have a library in my school, nor did we have one in our community. So we had a bookmobile that came around once a week. Books gave her a sense of escape. Now she's bringing the nation's top black authors and illustrators to children who will see themselves reflected in the pages. Mama, I got the tortoise in the hair. Oh, yeah. She is so committed to making sure that these books, these really important books, are in the hands of, of young children, some children who would not get an opportunity to otherwise, you know, have contact with authors. It's why authors like Eric Velasquez makes the trip to Philly just for this. You don't see this every day. You know, parents and children coming out for books, you know, may it never end. She hopes that every child who picks up a book will grow to learn that the world is much bigger than what they see every day. Such an incredible event every single year. And if you've never been, you owe it to yourself to go. Vanessa says her ultimate goal is to create a children's book museum. From books to business and a Delaware County veteran who's made it his life's mission to create opportunities for those who need a second chance. As Dre Clark shows us, Michael Pearson's drive to make a difference started with a challenge from his father. Michael Pearson launched his company, Union Packaging, almost 20 years ago in Yadin, Delaware County. Union Packaging is the maker of earth-friendly packaging for the food industry. Chances are, if you've ever bought Burger King chicken tenders or Wendy's fries, you've held one of Pearson's FDA-approved products. The packaging is printed, pressed, and produced at this warehouse where Pearson employs 100 people. Pearson's mission from the start was clear, grow a successful business and be an entrepreneur focused on community engagement. And unless I'm impacting people on some level, whether it's creating opportunity or in causes that are going to allow people to have those opportunities, I felt that I'm not being impactful. Pearson's parents instilled in him early that no matter what he did in life, he had to give back in meaningful ways. After getting an Ivy League education at Penn, Pearson enlisted in the military. He was a combat officer leading a platoon in the first Gulf War, and he was given a bronze medal for his service. Soon he would make the transition from combat to corporate working in New York City. But my father, who was dying of pancreatic cancer, challenged me to what was I doing for the community. He had experience working with the paper and packaging industry, but it was a challenge from his father that was the catalyst for Pearson to step out on his own and start his own company. I was comfortable in New York, but Philadelphia made sense. It, it was a community I knew, it was a community I understood. Pearson wants his workers to experience the American dream, knowing many of them have escaped challenging or dangerous circumstances. They're looking for opportunity. And they, and they want to have economic security. He also believes in providing second chances. Offenders who need a break, a new start, have found one here at Union Packaging. One way is provide them with a job, take a chance, and, and get people employed. Union Packaging has given Pearson a platform 
where he can be socially engaged and still make a living and run a successful business. It was a businessman with a focus on community that started one of the most well-known churches in Philadelphia. This story dates back to the 1700s in a much different city than we know now. The founding pastor of Mother Bethel AME Church owned a chimney sweeping business that trained and hired black workers at a time when it was unheard of. Brittany Ship shows us that legacy still lives on inside the historic church. Future Trailblazer, brought to you by Lankanaw Heart Institute, a leader in advanced cardiovascular care. In the heart of Philly stands Mother Bethel AME Church, founded out of the necessity by black people in the late 1700s when slavery was still legal in the United States and church services were racially segregated. Reverend Mark Tyler, the senior pastor for the past 10 years, says this cornerstone church, rich in history, has not only been a welcoming and steady force for the black community, but an advocate against social injustices and a pillar for economic empowerment. Whether it is the, the economic boycott of produce and clothes made by slave owners, whether it's helping in the Underground Railroad, Frederick Douglass spoke here to recruit soldiers for the Civil War. The church has always been a dominant force dedicated to helping the black community grow economically. The reason behind it all starts with the founding pastor, abolitionist, civil rights activist, and entrepreneur, Reverend Richard Allen. He owned property all over this neighborhood. When he died, he left in his will homes to all of his kids. Down in the basement of the church, there's a museum honoring the beginnings of Mother Bethel AME Church and tells the inspirational story of Richard Allen's incredible vision. When you go to the museum and you see the original pews that our founders sat on, it's a place that just should put chills down your spine and just really make you appreciate that so much of what we enjoy today is because somebody did something for us that they could not personally benefit from. Mother Bethel continues to be an example and really a blueprint for economic empowerment in the black community. Today, the church still provides homes for the homeless and jobs for the unemployed. Welcome back to NBC 10 presents Celebrating Black Excellence. The spirit of economic empowerment and entrepreneurship is the foundation of a program that offers a lifeline to Philadelphia businesses. It's helped hundreds get a jump start that's led to success. That's why NBC 10 honors Wells Fargo with the Black History Month Community Leadership Award. Community Leadership Award brought to you by Gary Barbera. Is Barbera the best? Boy, I guess. It's a lot of celery to cut. <laughs> I did it all. At her prep kitchen in West Philly, you hear the sounds of Victoria Tyson's entrepreneurial success. Chopping onions. It's a big boy. Seasoning turkeys. And wrapping her product to bake. These days, Tyson's catering business has big contracts, like the Community College of Philadelphia. But just four years ago, growing beyond her small restaurant in West Oak Lane felt almost overwhelming. It did feel like a big leap and it felt like it was almost impossible, but I had a lot of support. And much of that support came from the Urban League of Philadelphia and its Entrepreneurship Center. We help existing and aspiring entrepreneurs uh, grow their businesses or start their businesses. So actually we fill the gap between where they are now, where they want to go. Keith Ellison is the center's program director, a mentor on call for Victoria and hundreds of other entrepreneurs each year, helping with everything from marketing plans to tax preparation. And Ellison says none of the center's work would be possible without generous donations and guidance from Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo is one of the few organizations that gets it. We would not have existed. We're in our 10th year. 
We would not have made it past our first two years without Wells Fargo. That commitment to community is a primary reason why Wells Fargo is this year's honoree for the Urban League of Philadelphia's Community Leader Empowerment Award. Well, this award means so much to me personally, but also to us as a company. A.J. Jordan is Senior Vice President of Community Relations for Wells Fargo. He says the bank's work with the Urban League is an alignment of shared values. Wells Fargo employees even help run business and financial education sessions at the center. We're happy to say I think we played a small role in supporting the mission of the Urban League over the course of a number of years. Thanks to her training from the Urban League, Victoria's business is no longer a one-woman show. She now has 30 employees, workers now able to help support their own families, thanks to her entrepreneurial success. It feels like I'm helping my community, each family, which is helping the, our community, which is helping our world, so it does feel like I'm doing something. For 10 years, Wells Fargo has partnered with the Urban League of Philadelphia to help small businesses grow. Growth and opportunity, two of the main reasons millions of blacks left the South and headed north. This historic period is known as the Great Migration. The wave happened between 1915 and 1960. Southern blacks wanted better jobs, better pay, a better life. One woman shares her family's personal connection to the journey north. My name is Bobby Booker. I'm a first generation Philadelphian via my father's side. My father, his name was Benny Booker. He was born in 1914 and came to Philadelphia in the 1940s, around the World War II era, in search of not just a better life, but a better standard of life. Bobby's father moved from Atlanta, Georgia, part of a great migration from the South that transformed Philadelphia. Thousands of Southern men found jobs at shipyards and steel mills. The women cooked and cleaned for white families. And the migration of African-Americans is an important part of who we are. Robert Bogle is the president of the Philadelphia Tribune. For 135 years, the Tribune has been telling the stories of African-Americans in Philadelphia. It's a reflection of the African-American experience in America. In honor of Black History Month, the Tribune will explore the history of the movement. We decided to focus on the Great Migration. Uh, since we are within the 100th anniversary of the Great Migration and also within the 400th anniversary of when Africans landed on U.S. soil. For Bobby, reporting on this story for the Tribune is a full circle moment, sharing her father's connection to the journey north and its impact on today's Philadelphia. He allowed me and encouraged me to believe in not just my excellence as a person, but what I can contribute to my culture and my people. Pick up the Philadelphia Tribune throughout February to read the special reports on the Great Migration. 60 plus years in basketball and 50 years in broadcasting, that is Sonny Hill. He's changed lives by making a connection with thousands across our area. It's a connection that goes way beyond the court. The incomparable Sonny Hill, he's our living legend. Living Legend Spotlight, brought to you by Rand Spear. Demand Rand. Dan Snyder said to me, he said, Sonny, you're so popular in this building, do you want to buy it? <laughs> Mr. Hill, the legend. Thank you so much. This is a Sixers game night. A Philadelphia basketball icon makes his rounds. You know me. I love you. Yes, everyone knows Mr. Sonny Hill. <laughs> the best, best ever. <laughs> but my story about this gentleman right here is life changing. That's been Sonny's story for so many, including Philadelphia's own Kyle Lowry, now an all-star guard with the Toronto Raptors. 
Life after basketball. Oh, that's that's all for sure. How many times have you talked about that? Every day. Kyle is one of approximately 100,000 from our area to play in the Sunny Hill Community Involvement League, a league with worldwide influence, estimated close to a million. The league also boasts some of basketball's greatest ever as alumni, but it's the impact of the league that's much greater. I use basketball as a vehicle to reach young folk. Don't ever walk away and tell anybody that we gave you basketball. Walk away and tell them that we gave you character. Sonny's insistence in putting real life values ahead of basketball earned him acclaim locally. We are proud to announce that the Sixers have created the Sunny Hill Legacy Award in his honor. Which will and be nationally. On behalf of everyone at the NBA, thank you for an incredible 60 years of service to the game. It's a gift. And if you are having success with the gift, share the gift with others by reaching back. Sonny also shares his story on the radio. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. We have, at the present time, in the living room. Every Sunday from 8 to 10 a.m. at 82 years young, Sonny hosts The Living Room, his weekly talk show on 94 WIP Sports Radio. You better do some explaining on the radio. The show has become a Philadelphia staple that is part Sunday morning sermon. That it was not about me. It was about us. It was part about history lesson. The player that was adopted by the San Francisco Giants was Cha-Cha, Orlando Cepeda. And all sunny. People can feel who I am and what I'm all about. The more I can do good, the better it is for everybody. Commitment like that is why a West Philadelphia street is named in his honor. And it's on those same streets where Sonny has felt the real life impact of his life's work. Guy sees me and I want to stop at him driving. He runs beside the car and says to me, he said, Mr. Sonny, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for my life. Can't buy that. Sonny continuing to touch so many. And he says as long as the good Lord continues to give him the spirit to do his radio show, he has no intention of stopping anytime soon. It truly is a living legend right there. We hope you enjoyed getting to know people in our community who continue to live the legacy of black history well beyond February. Thank you for watching NBC 10 presents celebrating black excellence.